Okay. Um, so the last thing I want to do is just talk a little bit about polar equations. Um, I, I had actually started this and, and I had a technical issue, so I had, to, I had to reboot it. So partially some of this stuff is written out already, and then of course we'll keep going from there. Um, what, we, what I want to use is uh, our kind of four main formulas. Here are kind of four conversion formulas uh, that we would use for going between rectangular and polar coordinates as like points. Um, we can also kind of use them to convert from a polar equation into a rectangular equation, you know, or in theory, kind of vice versa, right? Uh, a polar equation is just going to be an equation where your variables are r and theta, right? They're, it's an equation where you're sort of setting it up with the radius and the angle versus the xy coordinates. So there are some things that are a little bit easier to kind of write as a polar equation than they would be as than they would be as a rectangular equation. Um, and then, you know, in theory, kind of vice versa. Um, so the first thing I want to look at is a, a graph of a circle. I'm kind of taking some of the mystery out of this, right? But if, if I have a polar equation, you know, kind of our, some of our simplest equations, you know, radius equals 4, r equals 4, that kind of by definition is just going to be the circle, right? Where, where your, um, uh, your, your radius is 4, right? I mean, it's, it's all the points that are sort of four units away from the center. So that kind of by definition sweeps out uh, for us a circle with radius four. If I wanted like a rectangular version of this equation, um, you know, what you probably use is this x squared plus y squared is r squared. So if your r is four, your r squared is 16. So that means x squared plus y squared is 16. And that matches, you know, essentially with what we kind of had already um, in our heads is what the equation for a uh, circle would look like. It, you know, it's not a function, right? Because um, it would sort of fail our vertical line tests. But it would work as an equation. Excuse me. Um, you could sketch out uh, the, the homework has some interesting examples where you can actually do sketches where you're doing not just equations here, but even like little inequalities. Um, so I just want to show you briefly what that would maybe look like. You know, maybe you have something where the radius is like less than or equal to two. So this is more of like a polar inequality. This is still going to be a circle, but this would be kind of like a uh, filled in, like shaded in circle. The idea here, right, is that you are, right, circle with radius two but you're also covering, right, if it's less than or equal to two, you're also covering all of the interior of that circle, right? So if your radius is less than or equal to, you would be sort of filling in and sort of sweeping out everything that's radius two or less than that, anything that's interior. You could kind of reverse that, you know, what about something like, you know, radius uh, strictly larger than three? Um, so that's going to be circle with radius three and everything larger than, you know, one kind of change here is, is that we're actually doing strictly larger than. So what you would maybe end up drawing is having to use some sort of like a dotted line as your boundary so that it's clear that you're not including the edge and then you're sort of doing everything that's outside of it, which is maybe a little bit kind of tricky to draw. But you'd kind of have a shading going on. Oh gosh, and then of course none of that was in frame. <laughs> nice work. <coughs> Excuse me, so if you have a radius that's strictly larger than three, right, you get this circle with radius three, you would maybe use a dotted line around the edge because you're not including the actual radius equal to three, and then everything larger than that would be shaded. So then you have kind of an empty circle, um, right, in the center, and then everything bigger than that circle is gonna be shaded in. So circles are really easy to sort of have equations for in polar coordinates, because it just is radius equal to whatever, right? It's it's a pretty simple setup. Um, if you did, let's, let's sort of stick with our polar, right? What if I did something like, um, theta equals, let's just do something kind of nice like pi over four. Okay, so like, what does that mean? 
So this would be, right, all the points swept out where your angle was pi over four, but your radius is all numbers, positive or negative. So let's kind of try to just do a quick little mental sketch of this, or just a quick little sort of simple sketch. Right, so the idea here is you're saying I'm rotating kind of out to pi over four and what I'm doing, right, so I'm rotating kind of halfway between the x and the y axis. <clears throat> and then any point that sort of hits that, uh, hits that angle is going to be on there. So I essentially get, you know, what would be my kind of terminal side of the angle going out. I'm also going to include negative radius values, right? So my negative radius values would sort of head the other direction. And essentially what I'm getting here is a, is a straight line, right? So this just gives... This just gives a line. I mean, it looks like it would give y equals x, right? This sort of 45 degree angle. Um, what you could do is say, so if theta is pi over four, then that means, right, tangent of theta would be tangent of pi over four. And we know tangent, of course, is y divided by x. So this means y divided by x would equal tangent of pi over four is one. So this actually gives, right, if I cross multiply, this kind of gives me, you know, one of our nicest possible kind of linear equations, y equals x, right? So that's, that's sort of slope one, um, you know, y is one times x, right, going right through the origin. Any kind of angle, theta equals angle, is gonna give you some sort of line going through the origin um, either kind of positive slope or negative slope, you can use tangent um, of the angle to kind of get a different version of it. Um, going the other direction, you could also do conversions from, you know, kind of simple rectangular equations. I want to look at something just like, you know, x equals 2, right? So that's supposed to be vertical line. So one, two. So your graph there would just be straight up and down. X equals two. And you say, okay, well that's, that's like a very boring thing. Um, and I would say, I know. <laughs> but what would it look like in polar coordinates? Well, X is the same thing as R times cosine. So your polar version of this, so if x equals two, then that means r times cosine theta is equal to two. And that would be kind of a polar version of that equation. It would kind of give you, right, in polar coordinates, the radius times cosine theta equals two, right? To sort of have that relationship kind of somewhat unexpectedly gives you this vertical line. Um, so that's kind of interesting. You could imagine then I'm probably also doing, what if I do y equals, you know, y equals negative four or something, right? So that's gonna be a horizontal line. So one, two, three, four, right down here. And so if y equals negative four, then that means the radius times sine of theta equals negative four, right? Our other conversion factor here, y, y is gonna be the r times the sine of theta. So that means as an equation here, you're gonna get something kind of like that. Um, so that's just like a couple very mm -hmm. sort of simple equations kind of written in either form and, and kind of graphed. Um, you know, obviously there's sort of other things that you can do here to a certain extent, right? You know, the advantage here with, with polar coordinates is that you could maybe write equations um, in, in, in a way, uh, you could sort of write equations for things that wouldn't come very naturally as, um, 
you know, x's and y's. So stuff like the circle right r equals 4 is, is a little bit cleaner than x squared plus y squared is 16. Um, you can also see the limitations, something like the line, right? Our theta equals pi over 4. You say, well, what if I wanted to shift that up by like two units? So you'd say, okay, you know, in theory, in, in rectangular coordinates, y equals x and then plus 2 is very simple to do. But, you know, what would plus 2 do here? And the answer is nothing good. Um, so you'd need some kind of way to rewrite that and kind of clean it up. You'd need sort of something else. Um, in any event, uh, I'll, I'll kind of cut that for there. That's kind of our polar, uh, polar coordinates, polar equations review. Um, in the very last section, 12.3, we're going to do a little bit of calculus both on the parametrics that we did in 12.1 and then also using some of this polar stuff that we just reviewed now in 12.2. So fun stuff coming up.